and News. Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Dr. Miles Jones is a biblical archaeologist who has found physical evidence of the writing of God at the base of Mount Sinai. You remember the Ten Commandments movie. We interview him, author of three books, right now. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a live in-studio interview with a returning guest and a fan favorite. He is the author of several books, including uh, Sons of Zion versus Sons of Greece, volume one, uh, a couple others we'll talk about. Uh, have you seen that 10 Commandments movie, you know, the one with Charlton Heston where God gives the 10 Commandments at Mount Sinai, and then the rest is history. Well, there is physical evidence now being discovered by biblical archeologists and uh, linguist expert, Dr. Miles Jones is translating God's words into English. How are you, sir? Well, I am very excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you back because uh, you've discovered evidence that the Bible is true. Right, physical evidence that the Bible is true. Well, you, you probably understand that the, uh, the, the establishment, the academic establishment, doesn't like to give credence to the biblical timeline. They say the Exodus happened a couple of centuries later than it did. So you, when you look there, surprise, surprise, there is no evidence of the Exodus. But if you look at it in the biblical timeline, in the 15th century, and entering to Israel in the 14th century, you find an abundance of evidence of the Exodus. And this is 15 or 1400 years before Christ. Right, that's exactly right. They entered in about 1400. <clears throat> so in my book, The Writing of God, um, I talked about this evidence, the inscription at Sinai being written in the earliest known alphabet of letter symbols. Of course, they don't want to hear this, that this, this was something that came from Mount Sinai, but now the new evidence is proving a, everything I said in this book to be true. They have uncovered Joshua's altar on Mount Ebal. You know, after Jericho and I, he built an altar on Mount Ebal. Moses had put the blessings on Mount Gerizim and put the curses on Mount Ebal. Now, that was about 10 years ago, Adam Zertal did the excavation. But now they have found, Dr. Scott Stripling has found tablets with inscriptions on them and they're in lead, so he's had to develop a special technology so they could be read. But they have been read and they have been interpreted and they are cursed tablets and they have the name of God in them. And guess what? They're written in exactly the characters that I described in the writing of God that was carried into Israel with the Israelites when Joshua wrote the words of the law on the uh, you know the altar at Mount Ebal. So, so let me <coughs> let me recap some of this. Uh, now we're thinking Indiana Jones. This is Dr. Jones, by the way, uh, not the same Indiana Jones, but Dr. Miles Jones. Close enough, <laughs> <laughs> right? And sometimes you wear that that hat. But uh, I have. You're saying when they carried the Ten Commandments in the Ark of the Covenant, and Joshua brought that into the Promised Land, that could have been the very first written alphabet in human history, actually inscribed by the finger of God. That's why you call it writingofgod.com as your website, you have images of that. Um, but now that same alphabet that you discovered and had translated before is now been confirmed in these new curse tablets where it's described in the Bible, the, the blessings on one mountain, the curses on the other mountain. They literally have tablets with those curses on the one mountain. That's right, that's exactly right. And it's not a question that it may have been, it was the first alphabet that was given to us on the tablets of stone written by the finger of God. We have plenty of evidence to show that. This new evidence is simply pointing out that everything I had written about it is true. The same alphabet is now showing up in Israel itself, you know, at Mount Ebal, written on those tablets where they're carrying out things that come straight from the pages of Exodus. Wow, so this is proof that the Bible is true. 
Um, it is physical evidence of the truth of the seminal event of the Old Testament, the Sinai Covenant. And, and hold and up the this conquest. book. It's called The Writing of God, Secrets of the Real Mount Sinai. Right. Uh, and you're literally talking about the earliest human alphabet in history. Does it predate, right. for example, uh, the Hindi language in India or, yes, or the Egyptian hieroglyphs? Or? It doesn't predate the, the hieroglyphs, but they're pictor, that's a pictographic writing system. Okay. And Sumerian, the cuneiform, started out pictographic, then it became abstract, but it still wasn't alphabetic until Sinai. And wow. it did develop from a pictographic alphabet of the uh, of the Egyptian glyphs. That's where they came from, Egypt. That's what they knew. So, so the they Hebrew simplified the glyphs. That, that became the Hebrew alphabet, and that was the first, and then eventually the Greek alphabet and the English alphabet we use today. And the Aramaic alphabet, which spread all the way to India, and the, the Brahmins developed the, the Hindi alphabet from that. So this one alphabet spread throughout the world. All alphabets come from this one which is what first got me excited about this. Because the one alphabet, and that alphabet appeared at the time of the Exodus in the path of the Exodus when Yehovah said, here Moses, here's the word of God and the writing of God on these tablets. Now you go and teach them. This is exciting stuff. We need to take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Dr. Miles Jones about his other discoveries and other two books. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back you know, I've been doing a lot of praying and for years I've been teaching about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, what really happened on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter two? Why did the disciples receive the power from God to do Christian ministry? And how can you experience the baptism in the Holy Spirit for your own power ministry? This is a five part teaching newly available. We just put this out. Part one is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, how to receive the power of God in your life. Then we go into part two, the gifts, the power gifts of the Holy Spirit. Part three is every instance we could find of speaking in tongues throughout church history. It's not an old gift, it's for you today. And also we have interviews with Charles Johnson and Lana Heitley. I wanna encourage you to get this product when you visit our, our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the online bookstore at the top of the page, PrayInJesusName.org, available for a suggested donation of $30. Or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. This is a topic that uh, in the last century was responsible for up to 800 million Christians around the world experiencing the gift of tongues and their own private prayer life. How can you have powerful intercession in your prayer life with God. This will energize you as a Christian and it's all Bible based. This is real step-by-step -step instruction through the scriptures. We want you to have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Before you even uh, begin to experience that, it might be important if you learn what the Bible says about that gift. Again, yours today for a do suggested donation of $30. Get this product today at PrayInJesusName.org. Operators standing by at 866-Obey-God. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined by Dr. Jones, I presume. Uh, Dr. Miles Jones is a biblical archeologist, has written some important books about physical evidence discovered near Mount Sinai. Where are we talking in the world? Where is this geographically? Well, Mount Sinai, the real Mount Sinai is in Arabia. And that's where it says it is in the Bible. It says it's in Midian in Arabia. Uh, it's church tradition that was located in Egypt. But the Bible says 72 times they went out of Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea, an arm of the Red Sea called the Gulf of Aqaba and entered into Northwest Saudi, what is now Saudi Arabia, they, they entered into Arabia and they went to the tallest mountain in Midian. And that's where, that's where Mount Sinai is located. It's now called Jebel Allah's because they Islamicized the, the region and the names. But in the old maps, it's still called Mount Horeb. So Mount this, Horeb mm -hmm. is another word for Mount Sinai? That's the original name of the mountain, but it's located in the wilderness of Sinai so it is more often just, you know, referred to as Mount Sinai. But since the events 
with Yehovah happened there on the mountain. It's also called the mountain of God. And that in Hebrew is expressed two ways, Har Elohim and Har Yehovah. So, but I've studied all of these references. They all refer to the same mountain. Wow. So it's, there's not any ambiguity there. It yeah. was just, you know, the original name, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, because it's in the wilderness of Sinai, and Mountain of God, because it is the place where we had our encounters with, I, with God. I know uh, Saudi Arabia is, is a kingdom and it's a closed country to the gospel. There, it's hard to travel there. Uh, who, who is allowed to go and see these things? Well, you know, they're opening up now. That's really great. And, and I, I honestly believe it's because they, they know they know that Mount Sinai is located in their territory. So rather than, they used to try and cover that up. But now what we're seeing is they're going to open it up to tourism. And it's already happening. You can take tours in there now. They're, they're creating a, a really a city-state, but it's more like a state. You know, which is a huge part of Northwest Arabia, called Neom. You can look it up in on the internet. How do you spell that? N e o m. Okay. And uh, they won't have Sharia law there. Tourists can go there. You know, there'll be five star hotels. It'll be they put a lot of money into it. But I believe they're doing this because right in the center of Neom is Jabal El Laws, Mount Sinai of the Bible, and m millions of people will want to see that and go in there. So the word is out. Wow. The tipping point has been reached. People are realizing this is where the evidence is. Archaeological findings, the linguistic findings, inscriptional evidence, and all the context of history that makes it clear this is the real mountain that God descended on in fire and flame and called all his people to him. So we've described, and, and you have pictures in, in your book uh, the Writing of God. Uh, hold that up again so people can find it. And it's through the website, writingofgod.com. Right. Go to writingofgod.com. Flip open to some of those pictures so they can see, uh, like the alphabet that I was learning about. Well, this is the first thing. They found the, uh, the footprints of the Israelites. Now, this was their first literate act. And the three hash marks that you can see on those footprints is actually the letter K. The kaf, which means in Hebrew, it actually means the cup of the hand or the cup, the instep of the foot. And of course, that's the name of the letter K. But that is, so when they're marking them, they're literally marking them as the soles of their feet. Wow. So we also found other inscriptions there that tell a tale straight out of the pages of Exodus. They killed an Amalekite that had killed two Israelite women. Uh, Hagar and he Amaya Bat Hagar, Amaya, daughter of Hagar. So we know the Amalekites were on those who were falling behind and did not have male protection. So they were able to kill the Amalekite. One of the inscriptions said, died Amalek, yeah. and the other two talk about the two women who, who died with them, right, in that, in that grouping. And they are written in Proto-Hebraic. Proto-Hebraic, which became the Hebrew language. Uh, so Proto just means before. The, the version, before the earliest version we know. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that, that's what it means. And, and a lot of this was preserved. You've been now tracing the, the Messianic church. Hold up that second book. And there have been, no, that's the Sons of Zion. I'm well, this is, uh, this is uh, the, uh, there, it's in two volumes. Oh, two volumes. So volume <laughs> one called the Sons of Zion versus Sons of Greece. There was way too much uh, documentation to put in one book. So this places it from the beginning all the way because it goes back to uh, the Genesis where they had the Israelites were entering the promised land and the people that are inhabiting then, there are several tribes, among others was the Cadmonites, the tribe of Cadmus of Tyre, who returned to Greece carrying the alphabet with him after they were kicked out of the promised land, which they were. So it's been both the Bible and in Greek, Greek legend that this Cadmus yeah. carried it back with them after he, the Israelites came in and pushed those people out of the promised land. So we so follow that's important it all the way. For some people, <clears throat> external evidence has to confirm what the Bible says about itself. You can't just take one man's word for it, or even though there's 66 different books in the Bible and they confirm each other, uh, 
but external Greek archaeological evidence is, is telling the same story. Right. Well, I believe uh, what it says in the Bible is true. I would, if I did not think so, I would say that, right? But what is in here as an accurate history has to be validated by what we know in, in scientific evidence, right? Or yeah. there's, there's a discrepancy. Somebody's off somewhere, somehow. But I found that the Exodus, all the evidence pointed to the Exodus happening exactly like it said it did. So I moved forward and connected this up with the Hebrew Gospels, which is the, the, the latest evidence that we have that the Gospel was originally written in Hebrew. So this is the story of that, the survival of the Hebrew Gospels and the survival of the Messianic Church of Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ, if you prefer to use that name, same, same yeah. historical person. We're, we're, you're using fancy Hebrew language here, <laughs> and I love it, absolutely love it. Uh, Yeshua, right, we say in Jesus' name here, but right. but uh, Hamashiach, in other words, the Messiah. Right, it's and, a, exactly. and you know, a lot of the language has has really informed me as a, as a Gentile Christian, really, right. I, I wanna get back to my Hebrew roots, I wanna understand where all this came from, and Jesus was a Jew, and, and how we were grafted in. Yeah. We need to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll talk more about how Messianic congregations actually date all the way back to the beginning after this. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I want to introduce my friend, Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry in the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray in Jesus Name's ministry. Dr. Chaps here, but this great ministry needs your support and you, can, you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm going to put them right back into this, into your amazing charity and show. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I back my pillow with a 10 year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98 or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The my pillow topper for the first time has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the my pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. My pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get my six-piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or MyPillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined by Dr. Miles Jones, a biblical archeologist who is helping me get in touch with my Hebrew roots. Uh, doctor, there are Messianic congregations and, and there are basically Jewish churches to, to use a, a, mm -hmm. a simple 
you know, I'm a farm boy. I, I try to bring it down to the lowest level. Uh, do, do they worship Jesus as Messiah or, or are they trying to bring the Old Testament into vogue today? What do they do? Well, they, they do worship uh, Jesus as Messiah, except they prefer to use his uh, Hebrew name, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, rather than his Greek name. Right. So it's a matter of prototypes. They, they are the same historical person. So if you want to say Jesus Christ, that's fine with me. Yeah. And a lot of millions of people have been saved by calling out to that name. So if he's good with it, I'm good with it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But the, we, to, to understand him as a Hebrew rabbi, you really have to get into your Hebraic roots. And he wants us to be closer to him. But to do that, we have to understand him, what his, his message really is. Because it has been distorted. And uh, I think a lot of people now are awakening to this. I see it as a, a broad movement. As far as I'm concerned, you don't have to have a card to be a Messianic. If, <laughs> if, you're, if you are a believer, a follower of the Hebrew Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of Yehovah, then you're a Messianic. You don't have to use the label if you don't want to. It's very clear in Acts 15 that, you know, Gentiles don't have to become Jews. Jews right. don't have to become Gentiles. Baptists don't have to become Catholics. Catholics don't have to become Messianic. I think the Creator is much more interested in your heart. He is. Whether your heart is ready but than, you than your doctrine. Your third book is called Messianic Church Arising. Right. And you're talking about this, the Jewish church, not just in today, but you trace it all the way back to the beginning. Well, we trade, we, it, it did start back there because like we talked about the right hand of God, this is the anchor of the word, the proof of the Exodus, the proof that there really is evidence of what happened in the Sinai covenant. That is extremely important. It's the anchor of the word. If the word is not true, what difference does it make if the well, gospels the were written in, in Hebrew or Greek or, or you know, The or earliest pidgin. church after Jesus was led perhaps by James, Peter, John, they were Jewish. And they were all Messianics. It was a Jewish it, church. And it, right, it was a Messianic church. Jewish would indicate they were totally into the Jewish thing. And they were. They did follow Torah. They did follow the feast days, yeah. just as Yeshua did. Right? They, did, they were imitators of Yeshua. And Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, was a rabbi. He was. He was. And he also followed all of the same, imitated the same you know, practices that, that Yeshua did trained by Gamaliel, and, and he wrote, especially in the book of Romans, which talks about salvation through <clears throat> Jesus Christ, there are so many references to the Old Testament mm -hmm. in his legal argument of the Messiah and, and of how we get saved and how nobody can follow the law where we should all follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he's referring to the Old Testament. So he he, he's the first messianic that really uh, educated me on that. Yeah. Well, Paul was really struggling to hold the church together. The seams were beginning to come apart the Greek church had become very predominant. Rome, of course, was beginning to get on its feet. And the Roman church, they felt like they should obviously be the leaders of the church worldwide. They had all the money. They were in the conquerors of the world. You know, they had the people that knew how to do international networking and stuff like that. They were the obvious leaders of the church. So they were competing. The, the pieces were coming apart. They separated from the Messianic Church and the Judaic Church. And later on, the Greek Church broke off from them. Church of the East broke off. So you started having schisms. It was a competitive church environment. Um, but, you know, the fact that the, 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 the Gospels survived through all that is a, is a true miracle and continued to inspire people in all of these denominations for century upon century. And uh, that really is because of the Messianic Church, which survived and carefully preserved the Hebrew Gospels through their years and the received texts of the Bible. Yeah. The, the earliest Greek compilation of the Bible done by Lucian of Antioch, who was a Messianic. Right. And, so we have the New Testament, which I learned in seminary, was, was translated from the Greek, but you're saying there are Hebrew versions of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right, there are. So this is the this is the short form. Matthew is definitely written in Hebrew, but also Luke. All the early church fathers said Matthew is written in Hebrew, but they also gave a lot of quotations from the Hebrew Gospels, and many of them come from Luke, not Matthew. So we know Luke was also written in Hebrew. When it was translated into Greek, they added a lot more information into it, a lot more of the narrative. So it's a bit of a hybrid. Okay, then you have um, 
the, the, the books of the Bible, the epistles that we know were written in Hebrew, and they're all in the back of the Bible. So you have uh, Hebrews from Hebrews, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd and 3rd John, Jude. James, Jude, and Revelation. These were all originally written in Hebrew. So that's quite a bit. And the others were written in Greek, but they were translated into Hebrew so that the early Messianic church would have an entire compilation of the Bible, Old, New Testament, the letters of Paul, everything in Hebrew because they were not Greek speakers. Yeah. And we have recovered several of these manuscripts. As a modern American, I thank God for the King James Bible, right? <laughs> first, first one to really educate me when I was a born again Christian in 1986. Uh, we're out of time, but Miles, I wonder if you could lead our audience in a word of prayer. I would love to do that. Yehovah, Yeshua, Ruach HaKodesh, we just ask that you come into the hearts of all of our listeners and lead them and guide them the way you would have them go. Open up, open them up to their Hebraic roots of their faith so that they can be stronger in their faith and know you closer and better. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our guest has been Dr. Miles Jones. Writingofgod.com is his website. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org. We need your regular sponsor donations, even if it's a little amount, for as little as $1 a month. You can set it and forget it on our website when you click on the Recurring Monthly Pledge Sponsor button. It's a big button on the right side of our website, Recurring Pledge, pledge a dollar, and you don't have to remember it. Every month we can deduct uh, as you as you wish. Our phone number is 866-Obey-God. We want you to call us today if you prayed with us or if you need prayer. Call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can press option two if you wanna leave a prayer request, it's free. Or uh, you can talk to a live operator during business hours. Please call us, we wanna hear from you. We'll see you next time. Maybe you've enjoyed our program and you're wondering, how can we support Dr. Chaps with our tithes and offerings? We've made it so easy right now. You don't even need to go to the website. Just use your smartphone and text the word donate to 720-573-0305. You don't even have to get out of your chair. Just pick up your smartphone right now and text the word donate to 720-573-0305 and you will help us bring you these programs. God bless you in Jesus name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.